Hello, everybody. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Week with your host, as always, Joel Benjamin. The vinegar variation in the French is considered something of a high-risk option for black these days. In the European Team Championship, French GM Romain Edouard took on the challenge against Serbian Grandmaster Milos Perunovic. The super sharp sacrificial line that ensued actually dates back to the 1960s, though the theoretical debate includes a few major contemporary games. I had to let the engines run a little longer than usual to try to get to the bottom of the crazy complications. Yeah, this is, was not exactly what you call a strategic g game, not a maneuvering game. It's fast action, hard hitting. Let's get to it. Perunovic playing white. And as aforementioned, it's a French defense. And bishop b4. Now, when I was uh, a teenager, let's say, bishop b4 was what you would expect to get. But uh, over time, knight f6 became the more popular move. And it's just considered to be, you know, just a reasonable amount of risk. Uh, maybe, you know, less gain, but... Uh, but uh, less pain as well. And so white could play, of course, e5 or bishop g5. That's how rather more of the grandmaster games go these days. But bishop b4, certainly a challenging move. Black can expect to give up the bishop pair. And uh, furthermore, it's his good bishop. So he could certainly experience some weakness on the dark squares. And white has many options from here. Knight e2, a3, bishop d2, you name it, but far and away, e5 is and has been the main move. And that's also true about the answer c5. Black can do stuff like b6 and maybe even not trade the bishop for the knight, try to trade the light squared bishops. But when, when black doesn't put immediate pressure on the uh, center, white is usually pretty happy in those lines. So the main move c5, and again, far and away, the main move is a3. So this is more or less the tabia from the, uh, uh, from the, the vinerer. And now there's a couple of issues going on revolving around the move queen to g4. And black can, can meet in different ways. He can try to defend the pawn on g7, or he can do it, what is the, the old main line, is to sacrifice that pawn and get counterplay elsewhere. And that's what we're going to see. And uh, in turn, white does not have to play queen g4. He can just play follow up with knight, simply knight f3 or a4 um, and just uh, you know play a slower game. So for instance, black can play queen c7 here and have to queen, meet queen g4 with f5. That's one... Uh, possible strategy. And another strategy is after 97, queen g4, is to defend the pawn to either castle, most common, uh, or some people would play king f8, uh, deciding that they don't want to put, make their king a target, but they don't want to give up the king side pawns either. But uh, more likely, black is going to sacrifice that pawn. So queen c7 is kind of the main move. Um, but uh, a lot of people take the pawn on d4 first, and that's what we see in, in this game as well. If black plays queen c7 right away, then I think a um, very popular option, and one which I kind of approve of for white, is to play bishop d3. And the reason behind this is that trying to get a little development in before grabbing anything. If c takes d4, then knight e2, defending the c3 pawn, and white is ready to either recapture on d4 or take the pawn on g7. Uh, in this game, black takes on d4, and I've noticed that in a lot of games, um, white, black answers bishop d3 with the queen coming to a5, 